Hi there and welcome to the program today. My name is Boju Oyemade. Thank you for watching today. Now today I want to um, share on the subject, the mystery of capital. And this is a series we've been doing for the last uh, six weeks in church, you know, church services. Uh, and I just want to share a concept about this, you know, uh, in t today's program. And the mystery of capital is a very important subject. It's the key um, to um, liberation, all right? Number one, from well, economic liberation, but in a deeper dimension, from the limitations that a person can have within their environment. It is a very empowering concept that Jesus brought to humanity. Now, capital, the definition of it will be the invisible force that when injected into an asset, no matter how small or insignificant it appears, surplus value will be generated from that particular thing, which means is the injection of life into what a person has in their hands today, what they have access to. No matter how small or insignificant it appears, in the eyes of men or in the eyes of the possessor of that particular thing, surplus value is created from it by the injection of life, a process through which we inject life into something, a process through which you extract out of something surplus value, which means that it's a conversion process, the same process some like Albert Einstein used in bringing out from a brick of mortar as much energy as to create what you call an atomic explosion that could wipe out an entire city. That energy was contained in just one brick of mortar. And therefore God, in his infinite wisdom, has locked into things enormous amount of resource that is hidden by that which that substance or asset is covered with. For example, when Jesus decided, and it's a pattern in scripture, it's a pattern of God. He uses what you have in your hands. He came to Moses and said, Moses, you've got to deliver the nation of Israel. What is the instrument and tool that will be used? Uh, God came to Moses and said, what do you have in your hands? Moses said, listen, this is just a rod. By his own definition, right, the 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 way he quantified it was just a rod what i used to tend sheep or i used to use to tend sheep in my father-in-law's house and god said there's much more to that than that rod he told him to drop it just for him to see the nature of it to understand that what he had in his hands wasn't just a rod that contained on the inside of it were things that were not visible to the eye and the way we estimate things is that we estimate them based on what is made visible to our eyes. So we quantify it based on that. But the capital means that there is something locked in everything, right, that can generate surplus value. Look at the woman who went to meet the prophet Elisha and said to Elisha, that, you know, my children are going to be sold into slavery, we're in bondage, financial bondage, the creditors are on their way. And Elisha said, what do you have? And she said, I have nothing. That's, that was her estimation of it. Based on her, the evaluation that she had from her own natural eyes. Nothing. Except a jar of oil. And Elisha said, that is enough. This is what you must do. And they extracted out of that jar of oil everything that that woman needed to get herself out of that situation and there was a continuous flow right until she stopped making a demand on that particular thing that she had then we come to jesus he was going to feed the multitude it's a pattern and he first of all said to them we need to feed the multitude the first thought that comes to the mind of a man when they are not operating in supernatural things like let these people depart let them go out of this particular place and go and find food, which means that if we don't have it where we are, it means it is not present there. The scripture says much food is in the tillage of the poor. And this message says to every single person, where you are standing and what you have in your hands has much more value 
than that which your eye is suggesting, right? It has more value than the physical immediate or immediate physical needs that that particular thing meets. That there is much more to your job that you have than the salary that you are paid that you use to meet your immediate physical needs. That there is another world there, which is the world of capital, that when you break into excessive value there, value in abundant measure, can be drawn out of anything, no matter how insignificant it appears. That is, the woman there said, we have nothing except a jar of oil. She equated the jar of oil, in terms of evaluation here, to nothing. Jesus said, we've got to feed the multitude. If you study it from all the Gospels, you find the perfect pattern. Because he said, we've got to feed the multitude. The first suggestion was, you know, let's send them away. And he said, you need not to depart. And that's an instruction to every single person. You don't need to depart. There is much food in the tillage of the poor. There is just he that is in lack for want of understanding. It is what you have in your hands today God is going to use to produce everything that he wants to create around you and the future that you have and that dream that is in your heart today. So, Jesus moved on and said, then another suggestion came from that disciple and said, well, 200 penny worth, which means if we can get this amount of money, we'll be able to get off the ground. Now, money really has very little value. In fact, the value in money will be one that will distract you from your purpose and your destiny if you don't understand capital first. If you don't know how to uh, draw out value from right things that are considered to be nothing, when money comes into your hands, or if it comes, it drives you further from the intended path that God has ordained for you. The Bible says there are three things that cause this earth to be disquieted, which means three things if you find any disturbance anywhere in an organization, in a nation, he said it's these three things. He said the first one is that when a servant, a man who is not qualified for a position, is exalted into that position, he said when a servant is made, all right, a master, there will be problem in that place. He said the second is when a fool has access to meat, which means when a person who has access to physical resources there and hasn't grown in wisdom, it creates a lot of problems, all right, for the people that are around in that place. And then he spoke about when an odious woman gets married, right? So it's important that they said 200 penny worth, just said that's not the issue. The scripture says he knew exactly what he was going to do. So he told them, go and find out, right? Now, if you read some accounts, you'll say uh, Andrew came and said, there's a lad here that has five loaves and two um, small uh, fish here. So it appears that Andrew knew what was supposed to happen. And so he made the suggestion. No, if you read other accounts, I think Mark's account, he said, Jesus said, go and find out what we have and then they came back and said to him there's a young lad here that has five barley loaves two small fish but what is this among so many so they looked at it and said this is not enough to meet we've got to do something else on the outside and this is the mistake that people make within their minds reaching on the outside to try to draw increase to themselves and this creates a beggarly attitude there. And once you go out and stretch your hand with that beggarly attitude there, you lose what you really have. And the value that God has placed upon you diminishes. This is important. The Bible says to him that has, more shall be given. To him that has not, even that which he has. Which means everybody has something. But some people are conscious of what they have and are making use of what they have. And he says, to those people, more shall be given. And to them that have not, even that which they have will be taken away from them. So resource flows in the direction of the man that knows how to use it best. The, the parable of the talent. Talent was given to every single person. One man got up and was able to generate from what he had, 10. 
pounds there. Another five, one said, listen, there's nothing I can do with this. So it's important that we understand. It's the first mindset that with what I have in my hands today, no matter how small, no matter what people think about it, no matter what they say, right, and no matter the opinion, all right, that I hold, there is much more to what I have than that which the eye, right, suggests to me, the physical eye. So I want to go into this world there of exploring, right, capital there, understanding that. And so the first thing you've got to understand is this, that God is going to use what you have in your hands today to produce everything that is in your life. So you've got to find that particular thing you have been despising. Nobody is in a better position. All of the great things that we see on the earth today started as small and insignificant things. When they were at that small stage, there were things that people could laugh over. Every adult, every man started as a baby from the same spot and grew. It is by the law of growth. The scripture says the kingdom of God is as a grain of mustard seed, which is smaller than all the other seeds that are in the garden. Most insignificant. That's how you start with the kingdom. But then when it goes through the right process, it becomes greater than every other tree that is within that place. But it started as the most insignificant thing. So every massive thing that we see today that people want to identify with, that people want to associate with there, started from something that was insignificant, that people walked past, right? Didn't have any estimate of it, looked at it and said, what is this among so many? And is the ability to take ownership of that which seems insignificant that becomes the first step in this. Jesus said, give it to me. He took the five loaves and said, bring it to me. The hands of Andrew were weak on it. There was this among so many. Jesus said, there is more to it than that which your eyes are suggesting. This need that we have in this place, right, is contained, will be met by the power that is locked inside these five barley loaves. It's a powerful uh, expression of true and genuine faith. That is Moses, the same Lord he was using to tend sheep there. And the only value it had at that particular point in time was to tend sheep. That same rod was what was used, right, to part the Red Sea. There was power that was locked in that particular thing. That same rod hit a rock. And the scripture says water gushed out of the rock. That same rod that he used to tend sheep. That Lord said, oh, what do you do? Well, this is just a rod we used to tend sheep that he could have thrown into fire and said, well, what is that? I will get something else. was loaded with powerful resource right on the inside of it that God, through his infinite wisdom, was able to unlock. And God, in the mystery of capital, wants to take us through the process through which we unlock the vast resource that is contained in anything. Ask any person running any great organization, where did you start? I started from something that was insignificant. And one of the problems we have is that people are looking for status instead of understanding power. Association creates status, but that doesn't give power. Power comes by an understanding of how to work with things that are insignificant and generate so much value from those things. That is how you become a person of power. That is, Paul was able to say that when they saw the grace that was upon me, they gave me a right hand of fellowship. He did not come into his own position by association. He came by being able to take what he had and to draw out excess value from that particular thing. What I was saying here, the nations that are growing in power, right, and nations that have sat down, right, are not by association, which means it's not because we are driving the cars that were made in Germany, it's not because we are driving the cars that were made in America that gives status. It's because we're able to generate our own cars in our own country. So you have nations like South Korea, nations like Japan. That's how you grow in power. Status is, well, I'm driving a car that was made in Germany. It's the most expensive car in this particular brand there, right? That gives status. But power means you generate something from inside that competes with what you have once associated with. 
So power is the ability to generate something that has so much value that it can now play in the same field. And this is the mindset we've got to have. Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that truly believes on me will realize. The power is not on the outside, but out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. To get into capital, you first of all must make a mental adjustment that you are going from that which is on the outside to that which is on the inside. That the kingdom of God dwells on the inside of you. That in that job that seems insignificant in a company, that nobody recognizes with a salary that might not meet your immediate physical needs. There is something that is locked in it that you can unlock by understanding that conversion process. And doing that will bring about right, surplus value, which will create the wealth of nations here. Here is a strong expression of faith in the process through which Things come out. Now, everything in faith is not just instant in the sense that there's the workings of miracles, there's the gift of healings there, which means there's a process in healing. Miracles, there is just manifestation there. So there's a process, right, to this that is supernatural, right, that takes the wisdom of God and the understanding of God and, and the application of faith, which means I'm not judging things by Right, um, this my eyes, what I can see, but I'm judging it by something else that is not seen. So it's an asset there. Uh, the scripture even tells us that afflictions there, test trials, are powerful assets if we take ownership of it. For the scripture says that the light affliction, which is for a moment, will work for you an eternal weight of glory. That's why it says, count it all joy. When you get yourself there, you treat it as an asset there through which you're going to extract surplus value out of this particular thing without having any sense of depression or discouragement, but knowing that something is locked on the inside. So let's move from status to true power. Let's move from a place of positioning by association to a place of positioning by deriving the value that is locked on the inside of something. And the first step is to take ownership of that particular thing, which means you are taking full ownership of that particular thing. You don't look at it as something, you know, that is an obstacle or, you know, I'm looking for something else. You take ownership of it. You take the five loaves and just said, give them to me. And you take full ownership of that. People might be laughing. Uh, people might look at it and, 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 you know, crack jokes and say, what is this? But you take ownership of it. What is this among so many? Take ownership. And people are not identified and taking ownership of things because of shame, because of mockery, because people are saying, what is this among so many? When I started this ministry, there was a day I went to see very good friends of mine. And when I was outside, this was, they were in a room and I was about to knock and they were discussing, talking about me. And, and about the fact that I started a church and they were laughing and cracking jokes. I knew it was discouraging and all of that. Uh, so I knocked and I said, who is there? And when I walked in, everybody kept quiet. I would continue talking and I felt bad. And I could have said, listen, what is this? And dissociated. Now, nobody's going to laugh today, but I took ownership of that. I didn't allow my hands to get weak. I didn't allow the discouragement to contaminate right, the attitude that I had towards what I had access to. So you take that and Jesus looked up to heaven. And so you turn and look up to heaven. They are taking full ownership of that particular thing. Going from a place where you are a sojourner, a place where you know this is, you know, to a place of full ownership there. You take ownership of that particular thing that this is now my space. And you carry it up to God with a voice of thanksgiving. It says, sing, O barren, that did not bear. It says, break forth into singing, thou that doesn't have a child. He says, for many more are the children of the barren, which means there's many more where we're not seeing results than where even results are coming out. So take that to God with a voice of thanksgiving and rejoice over it. Uh, the first step towards something is that the attitude you have towards it, all right, you must take off the limitations, physical limitations that are placed upon that particular thing. 
uh, and the way you remove to unlock the potential that is inside, take off the fiscal limitations that are placed upon it. And the way you do that is by taking that thing to God with thanksgiving and a praise as though that thing was producing everything through that that you needed within your life, was meeting all of your needs and producing so much that brought you into a place and a position, right, of great standing upon the earth, coming from this particular thing. You don't know what will come out of it, but you know that something is locked in this that is explosive. And so you rejoice and give God praise for it with that kind of attitude. Let heaven hear a voice of gratitude on things that men despise and on things that you didn't at one point want to associate yourself with. Take that up to God with thanksgiving there and, and bless God there, all right, and, and rejoice over that particular thing. And in doing that, you move out of this material world and you get into the space where capital actually dwells, where surplus value comes out of things, where people are able to draw out of things that other people looked at and said, what is this among so many? And said, I have nothing. You get into that place where the thoughts and the ideas, right, that will cause that thing to produce so much starts coming in into your mind. It starts by you taking ownership of that particular thing and, and you holding it there. If you're walking in the place and you take ownership of it, uh, what this means is that it's not about the salary that I get. It's about being able to generate surplus value from this particular thing. It, it's about I now have the opportunity to have something that I can test the wisdom of God on. If it was about how much of fiscal value it's, or, or my, my fiscal needs these ministers to, then Jacob, for one second, shouldn't have continued being a productive person in Levan's house. You see, this is an attitude. This is somebody that understands I have a Midas touch, that whatever I touch here produces. I go into a desert place and waters, rivers of living water flow out of it. I go into a land that is barren and it becomes inhabited. I understand that process. You give me five loaves, I know what to do to turn it around there. And when you're a man like that and you're a person like that with that kind of understanding and that's the way you approach things and that's the skill the Spirit of God has given to you because you subjected yourself to the process through which you unleash right, what is locked up in something. The Bible tells us it is the glory of the Lord to conceal a matter and it's the honor of the kings to search that matter out. So I'll leave you with this because of time, that in anything you are standing on today, where you are, and with what you have in your hands today, with no addition on the outside, within it, right, is locked the fulfillment of every promise that God has given to you in Scripture, everything, vision that you have inside your heart. All right, the grass is not green on the other side. What you need to understand is how to grow it where you are and to unlock that. Take ownership of it. Stop being discouraged. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Give God thanks and see that where you are, the fullness of it will come out. And you escape out of this material world into the realm where the Spirit of God begins to administer the thoughts that will produce all of that within your life. Because of time, we've got to stop here. Uh, you can join me on Twitter at Pastor Poch, where we have conversations like this. Thank you for watching once again. My name is Poch Emadi. And don't forget, Friday the 17th, we have Snapshots, the drama group in of Covenant Christian Center has a stage play titled Clogs Reloaded, Nigeria in 2016. God bless you and have a wonderful week in his presence. Join Pastor Poju Oyemade every Sunday, first service at the Yaba Center, number 400 Harbert Macaulay Road, Yaba at 6.30 a.m. Second and fourth services at the Covenant Place, Igomu, Lagos, beside National Theatre at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Third service at the Island Centre, Lagoon Restaurant, Ozumba Mbadiwe, Victoria Island, Lagos, at 8.45 a.m. And also at the midweek service at the Yaba Centre, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you for watching.